Hello and welcome back to my craft room. I've got a new slow stitching project for you today. It's just a small project. Um, I think it's very beginner friendly, um, but for people who've been stitching a bit longer, I think you're still, it, it's a fun idea and it's a good way to use up um, all of those little scraps that we tend to hang on to. So what I'm gonna be making are these cute little fabric brooches. I'll put a picture in here. They're just made up out of scraps. So I'm going to be going over some very basic stitches, just the ones I'll be using for this project, um, because a couple of people have said they might find that helpful. And also, somebody was asking about um, tips for storing thread, because they said they, they get their threads in a tangle. So I'll, I'll, I'll go over what I do. I am by no, I am so far away from being um, an expert embroiderer. I just do my stitching for fun. I don't take it too seriously. I kind of make it up as I go along a little bit, but I can show you, I can show you what I do. And um, I would very, if you want tutorials that show you how to do real proper embroidery, I would suggest go and watch someone like Sarah Humphrey. She's brilliant. I'll, I'll, I'll try and remember to leave a link to Sarah. Um, she is a perfect embroiderer and she she's she's a lovely lady to listen to um she she her tutorials are filmed really beautifully really clearly she explains everything perfectly so if you want proper <laughs> if you want to uh, watch a tutorial by a proper embroiderer you want to look out for somebody like that but i'm just going to show you the very basics that you need to do uh, this project this project will use up all those tiny scraps that you've got but you don't like to get rid of i've got these little piles set out here and each of these little piles it's going to become a brooch <laughs> what i did was i went through so this is one of my bags of scraps that i get from bazaar so uh bazaar it will take it will be a, a mixture they're all if you've not come across Bazaar before, most of my regular viewers will have heard me rave about Bazaar before. But you get this mixture of cottons, silks, linens, all sorts. But they're all from reclaimed. They're all reclaimed from clothes. They would all. They're all fabrics that would be otherwise wasted. So um, I, I just love that whole idea. And they come in these beautiful reclaimed sari bags as well. What I've done is I've dug out a few little bits here so that's the kind of that's the sort of wool that you get occasional sort of thicker pieces like this as well and i might use some of that in this project and then i've got some of the sort of smaller bits um i love, I love the pieces like this um even tiddly bits like this i can use it's all tiny pieces that i just can't bring myself to throw away all of those i can use for this and then this was one of the bigger pieces you can see this is the from the edge of a blouse or something um, because I just wanted a bit of a firmer backing for some of these where I've got thin pieces of silk so I've got some I've got you've used some of that as well I might have a bit more of that and do it these are all going to be birds I might bring out some of this and do a heart as well quite like that quite like that mixture okay leave those out too and then I want a bit of plain to go with that okay Right, so there's all my little pieces I've picked up to use. Oh, they're gorgeous. Little tiny snippets like that. You just can't throw them away. You've got to do something with them. And I love that some of these pieces, because they've come from reclaimed fabric, reclaimed garments, you know, you'll get, um, there's, obviously this is the outer, the decorative fabric, and then you'll get like an interlining, which sometimes is, was probably recycled already. They've used something else just to interline the fabrics. And then there's the backing fabric there. So you've got three layers and you can take them apart and use them all separately. Brilliant in slow stitching projects. If you haven't seen already, I will leave the link to Bazaar. I'm not sponsored in any way by Bazaar. I just love them. I think they're brilliant. I love their ethics. I love the way they work. They're lovely people. Um, and I just love the spirit of what they do and how they do it and uh, and if you do order from them if you put in the message to the seller at the end if you put arty farty annie treat they'll put a little extra something in for you it could be anything because they don't have unlimited supplies of of, of any one item so you just get a little extra treat and they'll go by feel and they'll and it depends on what they've got and what you've ordered i always get excited about a delivery from bazaar anyway but to get a little extra treat is always nice isn't it so this is my little it was going to just be a needle but but it kind of grew a bit <laughs> it's become like a needle wrap um, and I made this out of the bits and bobs from Bazaar. Here's my needle book. So I've got this detachable pin cushion. My little needle book at the front. 
I got a slot for my funky scissors and then a little pocket so you can see because that's a bit of that <laughs> um because it comes from clothes you sometimes get bits like this so this bit has got shearing elastic to it so i thought that was perfect to put my um i could put my little needle holders my thimble can go in there whatever threads i'm using so this is my mini kind of slow stitching kit that i take downstairs with me in the evening to sit and stitch in front of the telly or whatever put that out of the way for a minute show it what else I've got so I was inspired I wanted to make one of these little textile brooches and um, I was inspired partly by you know outside spring is in the air definitely the days are drawing out and the birds are starting to they're caught in <laughs> and they're starting to nest and you know so I thought a little bird would be would be really cute and also because as well in the scrap packs from Bazaar as well as getting fabrics you also get all sorts of little odds and ends you'll get braids like this you'll sometimes get pieces like this um or or this um i got this in my last one i <laughs> love that you'll get all, all sorts of things and quite often you'll get these little birds with bells and beads and things on and i just i think they're really cute usually you see them hanging up in strings or on mobiles don't you um so i thought i'll make a little brooch kind of like this but but flatter and uh, slightly bigger and just using little scraps of fabric I could even stitch sequins and things on I haven't decided about that so that's my inspiration so I've just used a little scrap of a uh, little bit of old printed scrapbooking paper that was just drawn a really basic bird shape and then this is what become the the breast of the bird let's turn it, I'll turn it the other way up so you can see it can't see it very well and then this is the wing I've done that the wrong way around that's why it's not fitting I thought it was fitting before I will make it up a little bit as I go along if my fabric isn't quite big enough and they have to be a slightly different shape that really doesn't matter if anybody's watching this and wants to do it and doesn't feel confident to draw that little bird shape out just tell me and I'll scan it and put it in the Facebook group in the discord group or something so you can find it but you know you could trace it out of you could probably find a shape on online and print it out and trace around it the size isn't crucial you know and then I thought I also thought a little heart would be cute so I'm going to use these for a heart but I'll do that after hopefully the photo I put in a few minutes ago shows the finished thing and this project project all went beautifully and exactly as I was hoping you never can tell at this stage I'm making it up as I go along as usual so other things I'll need I'll need my scissors I'll need some needles and threaders I'll go through them in a minute might be handy to have a pencil to draw onto the fabric or use one of these friction pens so this is a green one I got this free from work a while back my husband uses black ones to do his sudoku puzzles and things with because you can rub out the idea is that you they go on like ink like that just look like ink uh, but when you rub with this sort of silicone you look it's not silicone I don't know what it is some kind of plasticky end it erases Oh, that's a bit dirty, so it's me. <laughs> but it does, it erases completely. It's not actually the, um, there's nothing magical about this really. It's just that it causes friction, which causes heat, and it's the heat that makes the ink disappear. So when I, when I use this on fabric, I don't try and rub it out. I use heat to erase it. And um, I'll either blast it in my hairdryer, you can iron it, or just I just hold it against the radiator, and that's usually enough to make it go incidentally if you put it in the freezer the lines will reappear so that might be handy I've got these scissors that I use for cutting out my paper I'll use these for cutting my threads and my little bits of fabric here are my threads I've also got this just this quilting thread because I've got some to use up if I'm doing any plain stitching but for my decorative stitching I'm using this stranded cotton before we go on to the threads so once I come to the threads I'll probably go on to the stitching just a couple of other things we're going to need something to just lightly stuff them with I could use a little bit of polyester toy filling I will probably use some of this this is my I think they, they call it orts these kind of leftover threads and tiny snippets and things from other projects and I stuff them all into this jar and they're really good for stuffing small projects and things and also brooch bats because it's going to be a brooch <laughs> We're going to need some kind of brooch back. Um, so this kind of thing. I'm not sure how big it's going to turn out yet. So that's a slightly bigger one. I've got some of the two whole ones as well. And I usually just glue these on the back, but obviously you can stitch through those holes too. I will probably, I will probably glue to be honest. We'll see when we get there. 
they're really they're cheapest chips to buy pretty easy to get hold of in uh, craft shops or sewing shops or whatever or get them online um but if you don't want to do that and you just want to make one and you don't want to go out and buy those just use a safety pin you get away with that when i'm stitching around the main shapes i would i will use this thread um, but I could just as well use just one strand of the stranded cotton. But that's what that's there for. I've got several different types of needles here. Now, one of my favourite needles to use for this kind of embroidery is, I think they call it a chenille needle. It's small and sharp, but it's got a big eye. And I can't find any of them at the moment. Maybe because it's my favourite needle, I've managed to gradually lose them. They look a little, it's pretty much like this one but with a sharper point um, I just can't find any which is really frustrating and I think this might be a bit tricky to get through the fabric smoothly because it's yeah, because it's, it's sort of blunt ended so it's really good for lots of things but not, not for this when I'm doing my Kawandi style quilting I will tend to use one even as big as this quite a big eye sharp point and quite long so I can do lots of stitches at the same time in one go that one's a tapestry needle so it's kind of quite blunt ended with a big eye and um and that's really good if you're going into sort of coarser woven fabrics and things that's really handy to have i think for this yeah i think for this i'm going to go for this one it's reasonably long it's quite sharp and it's got the eye is plenty big enough to take two strands of the cotton there we go so that's what i'm going to go for so let's look at the threads again as i say very much i'm, I'm aiming this at total beginners so this is um this is quite a cheap brand actually i can't even, I don't even know what it's called jan lynn i bought a big cheap bundle at one point i am lucky i've got a whole huge uh, box full of embroidery threads um which a cross stitching friend friend gave to me at one point when she was getting rid of she was having a bit of a cull uh, so yeah so the ones she gave me are all kind of anchor and dmc anchor dmc really nice ones some of these cheaper ones are a little bit Oh, don't, not quite so nice to use <laughs> sometimes now I think it was Beth who asked about storing thread because she always gets in a tangle look Beth this is I'm exactly the same and I don't mind working in this kind of mess <laughs> if I was doing a project where I had to be more careful like a county cross stitch or something like that where the colours were crucial um, I would be much more organised but I tend to just do small projects like this where I look for the colour I want use the colour I want and that's it I do, you know I don't need to find the same colour again otherwise I would be a bit more careful um, having said that I shouldn't be in quite such a mess as this so what I'm going to do is show you kind of a, a better way to do it <laughs> if you don't want to end up like this so this this one's an anchor thread so the bands will usually tell you you've got the brand name up there so this is called stranded cotton it's called stranded cotton because it's got six strands to it Um, on the other band you'll find a number and if you do want to make sure you use the same colour again then it's important to note that number so when you when you take any thread out just like hold this gently and pull and you should be able to just pull out a length like that don't pull out too much I'll probably go one more I wouldn't go longer than that it's frustrating when you have to keep stopping and re-threading but it's even more frustrating when you get in a tangle and if you have your thread too much longer than that it will get in a tangle that's what I find anyway so as I say six there are six strands to this and usually for most embroidery project projects you'll just be using two Sometimes it's nice to use all six strands and you get really nice effects that way or, or, or maybe four strands. If you're following uh, instructions for a project, just, just check what it says. Bring that down a little bit. So when I want to get my two strands off, because I think Beth said she had a bit of a problem with that, you just pull them, tease them apart, pick off two strands like that okay so the idea now is you pull off those two strands and sometimes I, I've, I get lucky and I can just hold this gently and pull two strands away but usually it gets all knotted up so what I tend to do <laughs> rightly or wrongly is like whoops I'll take this other end hold that between my teeth <laughs> and I'll just do this split it and that way 
they don't seem to get in a tangle now that's probably a completely wrong way to do it but it works for me so then you've got your two strands ready to go in your needle now at this point what I would recommend you do if you don't want to get in a tangle is once you've started the skein this is called a skein wind the whole lot onto a little card let me show you what they look like hang on so you get these little purpose-made cards they're really cheap as chips to buy especially the cardboard ones these are plastic just see-through plastic they've got a hole in the top and you just wind the thread on so um so i was going to wind this one on they've got these little slits there you can ooh, that one's gone through there that's okay to hold the thread and you just wind it on and then i put it through the, the little slit at the other end and then you keep it tidy and the important thing to do is to write take make a note of that number and write it on here if you're on one of these plastic ones you'll have to use like a marker or something permanent marker write the number on there and i would say write the if, if it's anchor or dmc or whatever the make is on there as well and one of the nice things about these because they always have this hole <laughs> you can put them on a book ring like this and just keep the uh, threads the colors that you're using for a particular project to keep them all together so that's quite good to do so this is what one looks like when i've actually wound a whole skein onto it so i wound the whole skein on and then what i've done is so we're like with this one now this so i've taken my two strands off i've lost it oh yeah and the orange went on there so where i've ended up with the other four strands left over i've just wound them on the other way just so otherwise what i end up with is a whole lot of four strand or two strand pieces in a muddle here if you wind around the the card with the with the uh with what's left of the skein you won't get confused and you won't get in a tangle that's probably a better way to do it but in practice this <laughs> this tends to be how i work oh but it's okay it works for me now when it comes to threading i would advocate very strongly <laughs> that you get a needle threader so you've got there's a couple of different there are other kinds as well but these are the ones i like to use so there's this little this little flimsy looking wire one like we used to get free in christmas crackers but works works really well and you'll need that if you want to go through the fairly fine fairly small eye needles um like this one so what you do is you push the wire so obviously if i had better eyesight i could just put these two strands of of cotton through the eye of that needle my eyesight's rubbish but it's quite easy to put the wire through <laughs> through the eye of that needle and then you put the the thread through that which again is so much easier than putting it through the eye of the needle and then just pull the wire back through the eye And there you go for a bigger needle eye and a bigger type of thread you can use this one so i've just put in the uh the threader through the eye of the needle keep it leave it in there put your thread through the through that hole which is a lot easier than putting it through the eye of the needle like that and then just pull that back through um if you've got a tapestry needle and really chunky yarn that you're using you can use this big fat end of the of the threader put that through that actually that's that needle's not big enough but you do if you're using a really chunky tapestry needle you can use that bigger end so they're they're worth their weight in gold those i've got my thimble there because people keep telling me i should use one i'm going to try this kind this is my last try with thimbles let's see if this one works if you want to use a thimble the idea of apparently people keep telling me you should be using your holding your needle with these with your finger and thumb and the thimble should be on that finger and it should be snugly fit in obviously you don't cut your circulation off but it should be snugly fit in so it's not falling off and then you push the needle through with this one i'm going to give it another go especially with the kawandi style quilting because i am developing a bit of a 
bit of a callus there, although it works. Another idea, if you don't want to go out and get these, is you can wrap them around any sort of shape that works really. And one of the things I've done, especially with these chunkier fibres, is to use these wooden spoons. My son had loads of these, he bought lots of wooden cutlery for convenience, but the spoons aren't very good because if you put them near anything hot they just go flat. <laughs> so not much good as a spoon. But they work really well as a kind of a bobbin for my threads, especially as I say the chunkier ones. And I think they look cute. You could paint little faces on that, would be sweet, wouldn't it? Um, oh, and the only other thing at the moment I think I'm going to use is I've got these, these buttons. So this is amongst the lovely little colourful package of goodies that Diane sent me. And there were all these little um, buttons and little ribbon flowers and things. And I thought some of them might work. Might work on these. Might be really cute, especially on the hearts. OK, so I'm ready to start. Now, I think before I start doing the birds, what I'm going to do is show the basic stitches that we're going to need. I'm going to set up on this, um, oh, I forgot what this thing is called. You by no means need this. There's no way I'd be doing this project using a, a hoop or a stand or anything else. I would just be, I'd just have these in my lap downstairs in front of the telly like this. But because it's so hard to film it so that you can see it, I'm going to try using this to show you instead. So hopefully this will hold this up nearer to the camera and it will leave my hands free to be able to show you what I'm doing more easily. I use the blue and the pink. I think they'll show up well. Okay, so I've got my needle threaded. That's probably a little bit too long a piece of thread really. And then, and then now you need to tie a knot in the end. So here's how I like to tie a knot. Hold my thread alongside the needle like that. Um, Oops, hold them together, not too tight. Wrap that round a couple of times, hold it there, and then just pull the needle through, keeping hold of this here, not too tight, but just firmly enough to stop them so, so you don't let go. Pull up, and hey presto, perfect little knot. So this project only uses a very few really simple stitches. I think you can do an awful lot just with a simple running stitch, just a straight stitch. And different variations on straight stitches. So I've just pulled, pulled my needle through from the back to the front of my work. It's so much easier doing it on camera, having, having it on this frame. If, if I was sat with it on my lap, I'd go in and out, in and out, in and out, all in one go. But that's quite hard to do with the frame. <laughs> It's amazing how quick you can get at that when you've got it in front of you. So simple, simple running stitch like that. Let's just do a few more of those. And again, I'm not, normally I'd be sitting so that I'm looking down over it and I'm, I'm at the wrong angle here. I'm sort of looking at my screen rather than, there we go. So just a base, I'm gonna leave a basic running stitch like that. And in a minute I'll show you how, it's another thing I like to do is to whip that stitch. But I'll show you the whipping in a minute. Um, we're also going to need a back stitch, so let's do a little back stitch. Come back out. And then instead of going carrying on in the same direction, we're going to go back to the start of that stitch. And then out a little bit further along and try and make them it as even as you can although it's quite fun once you've got, got the hang of all these stitches to start playing around and making them longer and shorter and different directions and mixing two kind of stitches together <laughs> do what you like it's your stitching oops obviously the smaller you make the stitching the the neater and stronger it's going to be. But when it's just decorative, uh, it doesn't have to be strong necessarily, it just it depends on what look you want. Oops. So that's a bit of, oops, I've got a tangle now. This thread is, I've got it a little bit too long, really. And this is one of the cheaper, cheap bundle of threads that I bought. And one of the things about cheap threads is they do 
they will tend to tangle more that's what this has done now there we go okay so that's my back stitch it's not the neatest back stitch ever um, and then chain stitch is another one I want to use so can come up from the back and I'm gonna make I'm gonna take the thread off in the direction I'm working but then bring it back to make a, a little loop and then I'm gonna go back in where I came out and then bring the needle up a little bit further along depending on what size you want the chain link to be now I'm making sure that the needle is coming out over the top of the loop that I made and then pulling it through and that creates my first link and again take the thread off in the direction I'm working but loop it back and then go back in very close to where I came out and then bring the needle up again the same try and make it the same distance as last time although as I say you can <laughs> you can have fun with varying the lengths so make sure this thread comes out over the top of the loop and one more and let's do a few more so I can show you how because they just look nice if you whip them as well so um, making my little loop Going back in very, very close to where I came out. Bring the needle back up again a little bit further along. Making sure that this thread is on top of the loop. And that's my third little link. Just do a couple more of those. And once you've got used to doing them, you don't worry about actually kind of making the loop as such. I'm just sort of showing you that way to, to try and demonstrate how, how you form the stitch. And then if I was finishing that line of, of chain, I would just bring the, put the needle back down through just ahead of that last, just in front of that last link and fasten it off at the back. I'll show you how I fasten off in a minute. Blanket stitch is another one. It's easier to do. I'll probably be doing that on the edge more, but okay, let's bring it up here to start this blanket stitch because I'll probably be using that either around the edges oops either around the edges of my little birds or to around the edges of the wings because it's nice for appliqueing uh, pieces on I'm going to go back in here where, where I came out and make almost like a another chain link really this is how I start it off anyway I don't know if this is right or not actually that's what I always do and then depending on what direction I'm working you can work this in either direction actually um, but I'm going to come towards me because that's going to be easier for me at this angle I'm going to bring the thread in the direction I'm working and then depending on how far away how much space I want between my blanket stitches I'm going to put the needle in a little bit further along and you can also use this to edge but it's what's called blanket stitching it's what you see at the edges of blankets um, I'm going to put my needle in there and bring it up again the same same length there or this would be all along the edge I'll show you an edge one later and then I'm putting my needle over the top of that thread and just pulling through like that bringing the thread back to towards me again going in I'm trying to make this distance the same I make each stitch the same length as the last one but again lots of fun to make blankets blanket stitch I love doing blanket stitch with lots of different shape um, different size stitches make them start off small and then go really big and then come back in small again that's really fun to play with so so as I say I am so far away from being an expert embroiderer this is just how I do it I just have fun with it I do not take it very seriously I would very strongly advocate going and watching someone like Sarah Humphrey if you want to learn how to do embroidery properly. But you know, if, if you want to do it in a slapdash way like me and just have a bit of fun, then <laughs> look no further. Okay, so that's a bit of blanket stitch and I'm just gonna 
take that down there to finish off and I would fasten off at the back. And the last thing I wanted to show you is a French knot. So for French knot I'm going to come up to the front of my work. Um, I'm putting the uh, thread away from me, the needle in the needle in front of it and then I'm just winding the thread around. Uh, I think traditionally you only wind it round once or twice. Um, but I quite like to, sometimes I'll put it round three, four, even more times and make big loose messy French knots. Depends on what look I'm after. I'm going to put the needle back down through the fabric, just very close to but not quite in the same hole that it came out of. I'm just pulling that thread quite taut and I'm putting my needle back down through and that has formed my little knot. See if I can hold that a little bit closer and that's what I'm going to use for my bird's eyes. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do that once more to show you. So you come up from the back I'm holding the thread away from me, put the needle in front of it, I'm winding it round a couple of times. Oop, oh, did that, <laughs> did that again. Pulling the, pulling the um, thread fairly, I'm keeping it fairly taut, keeping tension on it. I'm putting the needle back down into the fabric, close to where I came out, keeping this pretty tight to create that little knot. I'm pulling it through. Just going to try it once more and see if that actually shows up very well on the camera. It's hard for me to look at what I'm doing and what it looks like on the camera. Winding that round. Let's try this. I'll do a bigger one this time. Putting that back down close to where I came out. Pull, pull here, not like ridiculously tight, but just keep tension on it. Pull the needle through. There we go, I'm fast enough at the back. You can also do a colonial knot, which, it, which I, I sort of prefer, I don't know why really, because they look kind of pretty much the same, I just prefer the way you do them. So again, bringing the uh, needle up through. And you make kind of a backwards C and then put the needle on top on top of this strand <laughs> and through here. And then you put wrap the thread around that way. So you've got a kind of figure of eight. And then again, put the needle back down very, very close to where you came out. Keep tension on the thread and pull the needle right the way through. I don't know why I just prefer the doing of that one, but they look very, very similar. I'll do that one once more. Pull it up through, backwards C. Put the needle over this bit, under this bit, <laughs> and then wind the thread around to make a, fi a figure of eight. Keep tension on here. Pull the needle through. See if I can get it to focus to give you a close up. There you go. So they look very, very similar. The other thing is that, you know, obviously these are just <laughs> straight variations of straight stitches. Um, it's also quite nice to just use the straight stitches just to make little little dashes like the oh I've unthreaded my needle so yeah you can just um, take little straight stitches and just fill in areas with just these little straight stitches and that can look so cute like for a little speckled speckled uh, chest on a bird um, and very quick to do or you can just take two straight stitches and cross them over Oop. 
make a little kiss or just a little cross shape. Yeah, very, very easy. And the only other thing, I don't know if I've got enough of this thread left, is if you can do the chain, you can do a lazy daisy. So for a lazy daisy, bring your thread up through to the front, make your loop like you did with the chain, go back in where you came out, come back out a little bit, a little, well it depends on how, how long you want your petals to be. Make sure your thread is over the top of that loop. Pull it up and then go back in just ahead of that link, just ahead of that little chain to hold it down. And then come back up at the centre. I'm not going to have enough of this thread left to uh, left to do a whole flower, but I'll just do a couple, two or three, and you'll see. Oh, I've done that wrong. Funny angle now. There's my loop. Coming back up here. It's quite fun as well to be doing flowers, do some petals longer than others, you know. Um, you can make the that last little straight stitch that holds the loop down, make that really long. You do all sorts of things, just play around with it. It's also quite nice to fill in the centre of the chain, of the, of the little link, the petal, with a straight stitch and a contrasting colour, or the same colour. Oh, this is an awkward angle now. <laughs> really awkward angle. I promise you, when you're sat with it on your lap in front of the telly, it won't be half as difficult as I'm making it look. <laughs> um, and you do it more easily than that. Usually you'll do, you know, perhaps five or, or I like odd numbers, but you know, or you can just do three close together and make it more of a kind of a bud. I'm going to, no, I don't think I can, no, I haven't got enough thread left to do another. And if you wanted to fill in the petals, bring it up at the centre again. And just do a little straight stitch to fill it in that's quite fun as well um, so when you want to fasten any of these off at the back all I do is go to the back my work is is always messy at the back but hey ho I bet Sarah Humphreys isn't and then I'll just find a nearby stitch <laughs> or I'll go back on the stitch I've just made put the thread put the needle underneath it pull the thread through so you've got a little loop there made a little loop and then I'll go back in through the loop again to create a knot I just pull that tight and that won't come undone so that's the same with all of the stitches so all I've got to show you now I think I've got this upside down I've got something missing off there don't matter it's working it's working let's not knock it okay it's the first time I've actually used this frame. It's brilliant. It certainly makes it easier for trying to show you what I'm doing. So now I want a piece of contrast. So I'm going to use this pink. Again, I'm using two strands. But yeah, experiment with using different numbers of strands to get different effects. So um, this is the whipping thing that I like to do. So you bring your contrast. You can use contrast or you can use the same colour again. Up to you. I'm using contrast so you can see what I'm doing come up in exactly the same place as my first row of stitching and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the same direction each time and wind this contrast thread around the stitches I've already made. Now I'm not using the pointed end of the needle to do that because if I do chances are I'll keep going into the fabric. I don't want to go into the fabric, just want to go under the stitch. So I'm using the blunt end of my needle, the eye end of the needle and I'm just slipping it into that stitch I've already made. And now I'm not going back in this way, I'm bringing my thread back and going back again the same direction. Like that. And if you do these with um, 
so you try doing it with really tiny running stitch to start with or um, another thing I've done is to run another yet you know a third color and go in the opposite direction so I would go in that way that way that way that way and you end up it almost looks plaited that's quite a cute effect so that's that if your running stitches are closer together you'll get a different effect if your running stitches are done in a much thicker yarn of, uh, or you know perhaps done in a, a tapestry wool or something and then you use a silk to to do the way the the whipping you know you can get all kinds of different effects it's really fun to play with so now with you'll get a different effect again if you whip the back stitch because there's no gaps between but again I'm going to go in the same direction each time and I'm using the blunt end of my needle again so coming back this way and going back in the same direction each time sorry for the wobbling So I'm so in awe of Sarah Humphrey's demonstrations. <laughs> she makes it look so easy, not just to do the stitching, but to actually demonstrate it, you know. It's much harder than you think. Trying to trying to film it, trying to see what you're doing, trying to make it so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> and she just makes it look so easy. Go. So this time you can see it's quite a different effect but they're both yeah I like both of them and then you can whip the chain stitch as well another thing you do with the chain stitch is put run a running stitch along inside it so that you just get you know if I did it with a contrast I'd get that little flash of pink inside the chain quite pretty too but I wanted to show you the whipping thing if you do it in the same color rather than the contrast color it just gives you a chunkier, smoother, bolder kind of line, um, which can be really effective. Okay. So there you go, you get the gist of that. Quite fun, quite fun to do. I think that's all I need to show you. I hope that kind of made sense if there's anything that doesn't give me a shout um either in the comments on here we'll pop into the discord or the facebook group i will leave my link tree below so you can find those if you want to um what i'm going to do now because i've been going on for much longer than i thought i would i'm going to make this into two videos um so i've shown you what i'm going to be using i've shown you the basic stitches i'm going to be using in the second video i will show you making the making the brooches that way um people already know all the stitches and stuff could probably skip this one all together and go straight onto the onto the number two video and um and this will give you a chance to you know maybe go away practice the stitches a little bit gather everything you need and then come back and watch the second video and uh, we'll make the we'll make the little birds thank you very much for joining me i hope you enjoyed that and i hope you'll be back and um actually make the project with me of it it'd be lovely to see uh, other people making little uh, little scrappy birds and hearts and things <laughs> and i think these these little brooches will look really cute on you know you could put them on your jacket your lapel or whatever but they'd look really cute pinned on your your craft bag or whatever as well wouldn't they uh that's it for me for now um thank you very much for joining me and i'll see you again soon